Simple and Plain Indexing, Indexing Head Calculation. In today's video, I am going to describe direct indexing and demonstrate simple or plain indexing on our indexing head simulator. If you need help with indexing head calculations, you pick the right video. Okay, before we get started, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Okay, let's get started right now. There are four main methods of indexing, direct, simple, angular, and differential. Let's start with direct. Direct indexing is the simplest form of indexing. It is also the most limiting form of indexing because in most cases it's a 24 hole plate which means that you can only index in 15 degree increments. Step 1. Disengage the worm gear which allows the chuck to freewheel. Step 2. Unlock the spindle lever lock. Freewheel the chuck into the 15 degree increment that you would like to index to. Then use the direct indexing lever to push forward which is circled in pink and the lever will push forward which is a yellow arrow and index into the plate for a locking position then you will go back and lock the spindle lever lock into place and then you're set to do your machining it is also important that you keep in mind not all models are the same so the operations may vary slightly simple or plain indexing angular indexing will be in our next video there are two main manufacturers of plate the first set is a two plate system which is cincinnati and brown and sharp which is a three plate system these are the main systems that you're going to run into in industry most of the indexing heads in industry are 40 to 1 but it is possible to have an 80 to 1 and 120 to 1 so know the equipment that you're working on before you start doing your calculation let's go over some of the basics so 40 turns would equal one rotation one rotation would equal 360 degrees so 40 turns equals 360 degrees 360 divided by 40 equals 9 degrees therefore one turn equals 9 degrees our first gear problem that we're going to work on is a gear with 35 teeth or divisions so we put 40 over 35 40 minus 35 is 5 so therefore each tooth would be one turn and five thirty-fifths. Let's break this down a little bit more. So five thirty-fifths is divisible by five. So therefore, if we divide both by five, it's going to be one seventh. And it will equal one turn and one seventh. Before we choose a plate, there's something else we need to consider. If you're doing something with extreme accuracy, you must choose the circle with the most holes in it. Okay? So if you're divisible by 17, so is 51 so you need to choose the plate with 51 holes in it this will only come into fruition when you're dealing with multiple choice tests so keep in mind when you write the ministry test you need to choose the most correct answer in this case it would be the plate with the most holes in it now it's time to pick our plates brown and sharp seems to be the best that's divisible by seven if we take a look at plate number two so seven times three is 21 Plate number two is a 21 hole. And plate number three, seven times seven, is 49. Plate number three has a 49, 49 hole plate as well. So we're going to choose plate number three. So we've decided to go with brown and sharp plate number three and 49 holes. So therefore, we ended up with one turn and one seventh. So seven times seven is 49. So therefore, our division is one turn and seven holes and a 49 hole plate. Our previous gear was less than 40 teeth. Now we're gonna do one that's over 40 teeth. Same as always, we're going to put 40 over the number of divisions. 40 over 105. Both of them are divisible by five. 40 divided by five is gonna be eight. And 105 divided by five is gonna be 21. So now you're thinking, wow, that's great. Eight holes and a 21 hole plate, I'm done. Well, if in industry, yes, you would be done with that. But since we're doing educational stuff here, no, it's a little bit longer. We have to use the largest amount of holes possible. So theoretically, we're going to want to use the Cincinnati plate number one, 42 hole. So what we'll have is 16 holes in 42 hole plate. Okay, let's recap this. Most places will use the eight hole and 21 hole plate. But for educational purposes, we want to use the 16 hole and the 42 hole plate. For our next example, we're going to use seven teeth or seven divisions on a gear. I am also going to demonstrate this on the indexing head simulator. So as always, we put 40 over the number of divisions. In this case, it's seven. 
40 goes into 7 5 times. So 5 times 7 is 35. 35 minus 40 is 5. So therefore what we have is 5 full turns and 5 sevenths of a turn. So I know what you're thinking. The brown and sharp 21 hole plate, 7 is divisible by 21, but we also have to keep in mind that we have to use the maximum number of holes. The theoretical winner would be the Cincinnati plate 1 with 42 holes. Now that we've decided to go with the 42 hole plate, 42 divided by 7 equals 6. Now we multiply the numerator and the denominator by 6. So 6 times 5 is 30 and 6 times 7 is 42. Therefore our indexing head calculation is going to be 5 turns, 30 holes, and a 46 hole plate. Well right about now is when I start sounding like a bit of a hypocrite. On the indexing head simulator we're only going to have one plate on so I'm not making the option to be able to switch to five different plates. So I picked the indexing plate holes that have the ability to make the maximum number of combinations. So with this combination of numbers I can do 47 different divisions. You can also do all angles up to 10 minutes. So using the indexing plate that we have, we have 21 holes so we're going to use 5 turns, 15 holes, and a 21 hole plate. Now that we know our hole circle we need to talk about selector arms and the plunger. Okay, let's take apart. Now that I put the rubber on the bottom of the feet, this thing doesn't slide at all. It's nice and grippy. Except for when I don't want it to slide. Okay, so I'm going to take off my plunger and my selector arms. So just unscrew here. And yes, this is a real plunger arm. Our selector arms here, you need a 1 8 Allen key. I'm not going to take this plate off for now. I'm just going to use my spare plate here. Okay, let's talk indexing plate, selector arm, and plunger arm, and plunger. Okay, first let's talk about the indexing plate. So this is a standard plate, which you'll find in the machine shop. This is a manufactured one that I made on my 3D printer. So we can use whichever one to demonstrate, it doesn't matter. So we have our selector arms here. <clears throat> our selector arms normally will go on our plate here just like this. And then there's a space or a shim underneath to lock it in place. That still allows you to slide but won't allow it to freewheel or fall down. So let's talk our selection. So in this case, um, let's say I wanna do eight holes in an 18 hole plate. So this is my 18 loop here. So I wanna do eight holes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you're like, well, wait a second. You just said eight and now you're talking nine. So I would set my selector arms to go here and double check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Well, the reason why I want nine in here is because you never count the hole that you start from. Now to lock this in place, all you do is you take a screwdriver, lock this guy down, make sure your shim's underneath so it can't move, then you'd put your plunger arm, your plunger arm is spring loaded, sorry, your plunger arm is this, your plunger is here. Your plunger is spring loaded, so when it's in this position, it'll lock on and it'll freewheel over top of everything. But as soon as you turn it, it snaps into place and locks in, locks into your hole here. So it's very important that you track this into the right arc, okay? So when your bolt goes through here and it locks in place, it's locked in the right arc. Because if not, it could slip out while you're machining and we don't want that. Okay, here are my selector arms. And here's the standard selector arms. They're basically the exact same. They're just a slight bit different. This one here uses this screw here to lock them in position. This guy here uses two screws, two set screws. One set screw here 
and one set screw here. So let's take this apart so you can see what they actually look like. <clears throat> so there's four set screws on here. The upper two set screws lock up against this shaft right here. Okay? So that will stop when this is on there. This will stop this from rotating and lock it into place. These two lower ones will lock it in position. Okay, so the upper one here locks it on place on the stud and the two lower ones lock into position. Okay, we want to do 15 holes in a 21 hole plate. So here's our 21 hole plate right here. So this is our 21 hole. So we're going to put our selector arms on. And we want to count 16 holes. And you're like, well, wait a second. You just said you wanted 15 holes. Well, we, want, we don't count the one that we start in. So right here is our 16th hole. So we're going to set this guy up here to be just like so. Then I'm going to tighten down our two lock screws which one is here, one is here, and one is here. Now that will lock these guys in position. So no matter where this rotates to, there's always going to be 16 holes apart from each other. So now we want to set up our plunger arm. So we want it to go into the third hole. So we put it in first. our screw in there we go so this plate here is also being replaced with an aluminum CNC plate which is coming it'll take a few months to get that done but for now we're going to be using our plastic plate so the barrel is set at zero and my plunger is inside of one of the pins and my selector arms from here to here is set at 16 holes because we're not counting the first hole. I move it into position and now I'm going to lock it down. I put a little mark here so that I know which Allen key I need or which spot position here I need to put the Allen key in to loosen and tighten my lock. So this once this is locked and only snug uh, it won't rotate around on you by accident. So now I'm going to pull my plunger out and I'm going to do five rotations to here and then I'm also going to do my 15 holes. Okay, so I'm going to pull my plunger out and I'm going to go one, I'm going to go two, I'm going to go three, I'm going to go four, I'm going to go five, and then I'm going to go my, I'm going to go my 15 holes. So then my second one, that's my first position, so let's rotate this guy around here. Drop this guy down. I'm gonna spin my pencil and make my first mark right here. Okay, so from here to here is one division. So this would have been my first uh, tooth going in for my gear. This would be my second tooth going in. So now I'm gonna go to my third position. I'm going to look for the little mark I made Loosen this guy off, spin this around to here, look for my mark, just snug it down, don't need to over tighten it, then I'm going to count five rotations and do 15 holes, one, two, three, four, five, and 15 holes. Rotate this around here. Drop my bezel down. Rotate with my pencil. First mark, second mark, third mark.
And my whole location is in the exact same spot. So let's take a look and see what the gear looks like when I'm rotating. So if I pull the plunger and rotate, that's what the gear looks like during the rotation. Okay, now it's time to take off the paper off of the drum. Okay, so all you need to do is take your barrel paper off Lay your overhead on top and check to see that all your dots line up here. Hopefully you found that informative and picked up a tidbit of knowledge or two. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. Now some of you guys are turning around and going to say, well Ray, why are you even bothering doing indexing when you should be doing CNC? Well this is in the curriculum and the reason why I made this fixture up is so that we can actually do this in the classroom and not in the shop because I've switched the projects over to CNC machines. If you want to see other great videos, check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. And always, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest. Thanks for watching my video. Have a great night.